The father wouldn't know, so they put it under the east trough thing and did this, and some pigeon scheiss, vogel scheiss, you know, uh, uh, went into the wine, and I loved that because the father tasted it and thought it wasn't yeah. vintage. <laughs> there's nothing like German wit, is there? <laughs> and there's nothing like, like vintage bird shit. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather not know certain things. <laughs> What would anyone there wonder is in the between the covers of this book and uh, wonder about it? There's a man right now who's a little too eager to ask, but go ahead. Why is the book entitled Dread and Superficiality? God, I was hoping somebody would ask that. Kidding, <laughs> of course. My answer is, why not? <laughs> because it's, every year a book comes out called Dread and Superficiality. <laughs> I, I, we expected more originality from you. <laughs> I, I think we'll show a few a few visuals from the book so you get a look at the inside of it. Is there somebody here that's going to operate that Chris, thing? Chris. That oh guy. yeah, we're, we're going to give. Okay. This oh, I want to talk about this picture. That's a phony picture. Uh, one of the people isn't there. There's a cutout. Actually, I'm not there. Woody is standing by a cutout stew. I want you to know that. Okay, press. Well, that's on. a good shot of Woody laughing, though. Oh, that, this is a comic strip I did called Rich and Famous. It made me neither. But it was running. I had a full-time advertising job, and I sold this strip to the to the uh, syndicate in Chicago, the Field Syndicate. And then I sold the Woody Allen comic strip. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't tell the Field Syndicate that I now had another strip. So I used to sign it Joe Marthen. My first three children were Joe, Martha, and Henry. And up on the internet, there, there's a cartoon site where they have a lot of esoteric mm -hmm. stuff, and they were wondering who Joe Marthen was and why he was fired from the strip and this guy Hampel took it over and then there was a th whole site story it said is Joe Marthen really Stu Hampel okay pre press on here we are this Woody did not write the comic strip <clears throat> he said he would he would help me with the jokes and he meant help but not do he said I ha he gave me the rights to all of his material his essays in books you've seen them pigeon feathers and and uh, uh, getting even and so on all of his uh, a comedy material f from the 60s and 70s uh, anything from his movie scripts which he gave me and he gave me pages and pages and pages hundreds and hundreds of typed not necessarily jokes, sometimes one word, sometimes a phrase. And he said, you can adapt or use these. Now, if there was one word, if it said baseball and I didn't know what it was, I would ask him on the next Saturday, what's this? And he would tell me the joke. So I was getting these comedy material coming to me. Uh, a, a couple of things on this page. Uh, 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 one thing he wrote was a little longer, and it's on the page. It says, uh, Sigmund Freud could not order blintzes. He could not say the word. He would go into an appetizer store and say, uh, Bitte, may I have, please, some of those crepes with the cheese in between? And the proprietor would say, Ah, Herr Professor, you mean blintzes? And he wrote what he wrote. Freud would turn all red and run out into the streets of Vienna, his cape flying, furious. Yes, and he created psychoanalysis and made sure it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a gem. <laughs> There's another one on that page that says, I, I was born Jewish and a Democrat. I didn't know which one was my religion. Now, there are a couple on there, and I adapted strips from them. Let me, see, let me get up and look at that. Is there a, can I take this out and just walk around like a singer? Here, here, get a Is this working? Ah, yes. Uh, where is the one that I have here? Um, uh, oh, rat. <laughs> oh, truth, beauty, advanced truth. I'm going to show you a strip of that. Oh, and here's the thing. Oh, here it is. It's like trying to, to teach painting, emotional sensitivity, introduction to greatness. <laughs> Lectures will be given on how to lead a tragic life. <laughs> Students must bring in at least one painting that will live forever in their own ear. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that's, that's sitting here. These things, as Dick will tell you, pour out of him. He's never, never without an idea. They're mind drippings from Alan's mind, yeah. Oh, Wonderful. God, I wish to do a second book of these, would you? <laughs> um, um, uh, 
uh, oh God, this says Partnership Philosophers Incorporated. Uh, I supplied most of the ideas, got a store, put in chairs, and thought, oh my God, they're wonderful. Let's th yeah. get the next slide, and that will, uh, where's, where's Miss Christina? There, there it is. Thank you, Deborah. I need that, Christine. I want to be out there. This is one. This is what Woody says. I threw the I Ching and got the hexagram. Shove off, up. Jew boy. <laughs> that was written. We had, you know, a television show sometimes has writers, and I and I had a writer named David Weinberger. He's now a professor at Harvard. What is his field? He's a visionary. He's a visionary. He thinks up stuff, and and, and you'll see it forward in this book, an introduction by the great. Buckminster Fuller, which he did as a comic strip. And the concept of that is that the, it, it tells about why the cosmos was created. And his theory, it was created so eventually there would be a Woody Allen. But anyway, David Weinberger wrote this joke. The syndicate, King Feature Syndicate Division of Hearst, changed it when it ran in the newspaper to shove off Shorty. Now, I had this going on... Uh. I had this going on all the time when I did the comic strip. Woody wanted it to be unique and special and intelligent. The syndicate wanted it to be broad, so they kept making it broad, and Woody kept wanting it to be intelligent. I felt like a schizophrenic living on a split level on the, the where three state lines met. It was terrible. <laughs> Give me the next, uh, the next slide, will you? Uh, Dr. Helmholtz, are humans in a state of nature savages as Hobbes thought or innocent loving creatures as Rousseau thought? It depends. Weekdays, Hobbes was right. Weekends, Rousseau. <laughs> <coughs> the syndicate hated that. It was too philosophical. That's, that's where we were. They wanted the bland things like Blondie. Okay, let's have the next slide. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Uh, I'll read this to you, and then I'll tell you how it happened. With this floppy hat, no one will recognize me. So far, so good. Not one person knows who I am. Great! I made it without being detected. Dr. Phobic was his shriek, and he cries and says, I'm so lonely, nobody talks to me. <laughs> Oops, I'll tell you how that came to be. Woody didn't write that. I wrote it. It came to be because... One day, one Saturday, he said to me, Hey, Stu, I'll, I'm going to see my shrink, and uh, uh, I'll give you a ride home. So this is a man, Woody Allen, who doesn't like to be accosted, as Dick mentioned, on the street. He doesn't want people bothering him, so he wears a floppy hat. He wants to be uh, in camouflage. We go down to his, uh, his car, uh, which happened to be a vintage cream-colored Rolls Royce with a chauffeur, so nobody would notice <laughs> How to be anonymous. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're sitting in the back, and between us is a big, fat, uh, real leather armrest. And on the armrest is the floppy hat, not on his head. We go up uh, 76 to Madison, up Madison to 86, down to 5th across from the Metropolitan Museum. And Woody doesn't schmooze. He doesn't make small talk, or at least he never did with me. We just talked comic strips. But he started talking small talk. There was nobody on the sidewalk. He could have just gone in, but he didn't. Suddenly, after about five minutes, a gaggle of pedestrians came up the street, whereupon he shoved the floppy hat on his head and ran out amidst them into the thing. So I went home and drew that, and it was in the batch, and he looked at it and he said, very perceptive. You get good points for that one. <laughs> That's how that came to be. You see where our jokes come from. Okay, what do you got next? Oh, yes, now, in, in the book... Each chapter uh, 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 is on a subject, psychiatry or women or philosophy. And, and uh, for the chapter headings, I used a punchline from a comic strip each time. So I'll show you the chapter headings and one gag from each chapter. Okay, shoot, let's see the gag. God is silent. Now if we can only get man to shut up. <laughs> the syndicate didn't like me talking about God. They no. didn't like me talking about sex. They didn't like me talking about Kierkegaard and Rousseau, but we did. <laughs> Press on. Do you believe in God? I'm not sure. Well, Kierkegaard says if you're not sure, you don't. Okay, then I guess I do. <laughs> I mean, it was a, a really intelligent comic strip. Press on. Every time she had an orgasm, her nose grew longer. Let's see the joke in there. And this is my bedroom. Ah, yes, if these walls could only talk. The walls say we can talk and take it from us. Nothing interesting ever happens. <laughs> you love it. The syndicate hated it. Oh, God. Press on. 
My face is my passport. I stamped his face. Okay, let's see it. Oh, this is his agent, Bernie. I love this character. Woods!